Jamie Dornan, hello, welcome. Is this, a, is this your first time on Off The Ball? First and last time, yeah. <laughs> well, um, someone as prolific um, a sportsman as you, how have you not managed to speak on Ireland's number one radio um, sports show? I guess it works. Um, a, thank you for saying that. I'm acknowledging my uh, sporting prowess. Um, secondly, I've never been asked. So, <laughs> I mean, that's probably halting me a wee bit. Uh, what's okay? I should really start things by finding out what what's been going on for the last while. I know you were away working in the states, so yeah. um, did that just you know stop mid show and um, and any sign or any idea as to when you might kick off again? And then what have you been up to in lockdown? Yeah, um, yeah, you're right. We, we were in New York. We were um, had the whole family out there kids about to start school there because we were there for a long run the guy was meant to be there for four months filming and then we we're gonna stay on a wee bit longer and i think the next job i was going to do was um sort of east coast of states as well so we were going to stay in new york and come back here for the summer you know had it all planned as best as you can plan given what i do and how sporadic and random and hard to predict it is um we had a solid plan in place and we were three days off starting shooting and uh we got locked down initially just for 10 days and then uh, after about two or three days we realized that wasn't we weren't going to be back in a studio in 10 days um so that was it maybe we put up and decided what was best for that was to come back here so you know we live out in the countryside a couple of hours outside london so we everyone back here and um there's talk about the show going up again in uh towards the end of the year, October time. Um, but I think New York's going to be one of the last places that sort of writes itself, to be honest. Are, are um, we able to know what, uh, what, what's, what's in the show? Or Yeah, it's a show. Yeah, it's a show called Dr. Death. It's based on, uh, it's the most listened to podcast in the world, 2018, same name, Dr. Death, about this um, uh, neurosurgeon uh, specializing in spinal fusion who was um, maiming people, making them paraplegic, end up killing two people and, it's crazy uh, worth checking out the podcast um i'd, I'd do that i wouldn't wait around for the show because it <laughs> could be a long time it could be a long time waiting um so and then so that's it so but then, you know if that doesn't happen then we're trying to get all the things in place where you know we, we need to as soon as able to work again need to work you know my overheads are pretty pretty uh, high and you know i've got to, got, to, got to keep her lit so um so we've been here and actually made to be honest you know we're we live in a country out in the countryside because so that we can have you know more space for the kids who so have got you know the kids are um it's all about keeping them happy you know and um we've actually been having a pretty nice time the weather's been great i sort of said at the beginning of this i said um if you have time in your hands and um even with kids and whatever you you need to you need to get some kind of schedule you need to have some something in place to keep yourself sane I said, you'll either come out of lockdown in the worst shape of your life or the best shape of your life um, because you know, people have the time and you'll be able to have the discipline and, um, to, to work out if, you, if you're up for it. Um, and I've been trying to be pretty good about that. I've been trying to keep myself pretty active, to be honest, because, you know, I'd, A, I'd go mad if I didn't, you know, and um, B, I just, I, I, especially, it's when, when your health has been compromised and there's so much chat about health and uh, in, in the mainstream media, um you just want to try to do your bit i guess and try to stay on the right side of it you know yeah yeah you've you've got one school goer now right so have you... now, uh, well one and then the, the yeah, yeah so what, the one, what, how's uh, that homeschooling have you been have you been partaking have you abandoned it at this stage or where are you at with it i've got to say it's got more relaxed as time's <laughs> gone on um, the world over it's like half an yeah. hour now it's like <laughs> no, it is. Year. <laughs> the curriculum um that we're following you know and the, the teachers are making these wee videos that they put up and um they're getting less and less attention and like, we're being open and honest with the school about that too you know um they're actually their school's opening up on 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 this coming monday and we're having this debate whether it's the right thing or not to send it back there's only five or six weeks left you know term mm -hmm. um i find it interesting you know it's like uh, I've been sort of doing mostly maths, which was terrible at at school, and uh, coding. Our six-year-old's doing, you know, computer coding. Yeah. Um, which I'm thinking the coding's not easy if you weren't brilliant at the maths. 
Well, no, listen, it's pretty, it's pretty basic <laughs> stuff. You see six, it's like, <laughs> can you move the, the, you know, the wizard from this side of the screen to this side of the screen, and then can you make him disappear by clicking on it? You know, but she loves it. So she's running away ahead and she's wanting to do stuff that the year threes are doing. She's just in year one. And, um, so we're having fun, a bit of PE I'm in charge of, and uh, uh, which is, you know, just running around, you know, running around the garden, basically. It's, it's been, but yeah, it's, it's got more and more lax. And do you, from your point of view, like, you know, do you peak and trough like everybody else and have your moments um, where you feel a bit crap? Or, um, or have you kind of made peace with the fact that, you know what, this is what it is. It's a period of time and glass half full, try and see all the good, time, good bits of being able to spend all that time you know, with your kids and to see it three meals a day um, and, and to always be around. Um, I think the latter, you know, I think you know me pretty well. Like I'm a pretty positive person. Like I'm not, I'm, I don't, um, I'm not saying I don't have morose days or days where I feel down or whatever. And, and they probably offered themselves to me more mornings than most during this, this period. Um, I am a believer that you have a bit of a choice in those circumstances to, uh, try to put that negativity aside and, and kick on with the day. And, um, and I do think exercise is a big part of that. Like that can really help, you know, and if you're feeling a certain way and you can sort of flush that out or force your body into a physical reaction, which then changes your mental state. And, you know, we all, you know, we all know what releasing endorphins and all does for your mind. It's, it's only good things. So I, um, I'm a big believer in, even if I feel crap, trying to try to rally. And, yeah. and try to make make good of the day. And to be honest, a lot of that's taken out of your hands often with the kids. And and, and if the kids are in a great mood and they want to play and stuff, it, you just you get swept along with that, you know. And you you've often no choice but to go with that. And they can help bring you out of those low moments, yeah. you know. Yeah. What about what about like people are on? I was on a Zoom call with someone that I work with, and and I quite, uh, uh, was with Shane Lowry and. Um, and one of the questions came in is, what are you reading in all your downtime during this moment in time? I was like, I've got a seven-year-old and a five-year-old, are you kidding me? I'm, I'm reading two pages at night just so I can, so it makes me fall asleep instantly. So from, from someone, I'm sure you probably have to get through a fair few scripts. Um, have they been coming in thick and fast at the moment? Or yeah, does the process been... work? Does it get sifted through by your agent first? Yeah, it does. I'm just going to take, I've got my, this is my uh, water. <laughs> I got. I got to show you this one. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. Brian and Amy engraved glass. Oh, look at that! That's that's. <laughs> um, Guinness. She does not be in a special cupboard somewhere. Guinness clear that one. Um. So um. Yeah. No. Have it's been a nice aspect of my industry that in that everyone's seeing it as this opportunity to try to um get and package all these different projects or these scripts that were maybe wouldn't have got the attention that they deserved or there wasn't enough focus on them because everyone was just focusing on what was in production, whatever. Um, and me personally, has been an amazing thing. There's a couple of things that I, uh, you know, I, I'm sort of setting up a production company at the moment with a mate and we're trying to sort of build our slate and get some um, stuff on there. Oh, a couple of things that we're writing ourselves and a couple of things that we've got the rights to or scripts that I was going to do that all kind of fell apart that now we're sort of regurgitating. So um, I've had loads of time to put into that, you know, um, and that when, you know, when time allows, um, that's where my energy's gone. Um, and it's been great. I've read loads of great scripts, but I've been, the, my main focus has been uh, writing, my friend and I writing this this script together. and. It's been massively rewarding and I just wouldn't be doing it. Like we've been talking about doing it for ages. I just wouldn't be doing it if I was in New York shooting 14 mm. hour days, five days a week. It just wouldn't be happening. So I'm sort of grateful for the time to be able to put into this, um, this, this project. Um, and my wife is a creative person as well. And she's I got an EP that's coming out in a couple of weeks and she's also writing, she's writing a musical at the moment. So she, and so she has her studio where she writes and then I have an office where I write. So actually we try to carve out time in the day where she can work and I can work, which just makes it quite focused. Mm. Um, again, having that schedule, I think you need to have that or you won't get anything done, you know. Do you, do you get scripts uh, posted in your letterbox? No, I wish. <laughs> Wouldn't that be class? I'd love that. No, I'd we love got, that. We got, one, we got one over the back wall. 
Um, not for me, uh, funny. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's quite that desperate. No, but one and titled Amy Schumann, which was nice. Didn't even get her name right. <laughs> So yeah, I, that one, I don't was know that, if that one's been read yet. Literally chucked over the back wall. In, was that someone just taking a chance, knowing your address and going? Well, I'd met, I I think Amy had gotten an original script from some guy, and then I met him at the shops, um, and he was asking had she read it, and I didn't even know that he'd given it to her. But then right. I don't know whether the second draft of it. I, I went out to let the dog out for a wee there recently and came across a script on our patio. So I said, well, "What's going on here?" Oh yeah, some guy messaged me saying that he was throwing a script over the back wall. It was a modified version. So wow. looking wow. forward to seeing her uh, perform in that one now in the coming years. Yeah, that sounds like an instant classic, I've got to say. Um, By the yeah. way, it'd be quite a nice story of like the origins of like, and how did you get involved in this story? <laughs> it's a great story. It's just, it, ju it just would want to map out that it would be a phenomenal script to follow suit. But I don't know yeah, right. if it's coming this route, whether that's going to to um to work out tell me so i was looking as well and instagram has become a thing recently it's like a, a reboot of it what's going on there don't know mate don't know don't know why i did it i have feel felt, like... if, uh, is that boredom or is this encouragement because you look at movie stars around the world now and you look at i know the rock is a, an extreme example of that but he's got 180 million people that follow him on instagram um mm. And like if, if a tenth of those, sorry, even one percent of those go and see his movie, it's yeah. incredible. That's so true. so um is there a little bit of that or what's the what's the thinking behind it? No, truthfully, there's none of that. Um and I've actually always been one of those people who's been like, I'd rather people just saw you for as an actor and they just judged you on your work and you weren't you weren't bringing people to the theater based on having a big following online <laughs> it's kind of like that guy um yeah more boredom mate to be honest more like um i feel i felt like at the beginning of this whole period this whole lockdown situation uh you were spending more and more time on your phone and just but also it was that's where you, we gather information now you know um and it was that it was like you know, being around, my wife had Instagram and, and um, you know, that, that's when the other person I'm seeing, we're all locked down and here together, obviously, and not seeing anyone else from outside. And it just became a thing of like, oh, my phone's so much. And, and my wife would sometimes see this really interesting thing or get this interesting snippet about something that she's got from Instagram. And I was like, oh, fuck it, like, ugh, maybe I'll just get it. You know, just get it. And actually, I did, I thought I would just do it quietly. And I, I sort of, I thought that if you had it ever and you cancelled your account or you deleted or whatever, I thought it was like a year later and then it was all wiped. And I so had this email, I typed in Instagram saying, I wonder, can I, what's that? And so before I clicked it, it was like, boom, 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 boom. and it's just like redone again. And I, whether they wanted to or not, all the people who followed me before from four and a half years ago, whenever I was on before, were following me again. Um, they were uh, waiting for this moment. To not, well, I mean, not lose anyone, it's like, oh, that's Jamie Doran. He's never coming back live again. And they were just <laughs> waiting there every day. Still nothing, still nothing. Well, <laughs> the ultras better. were waiting. Those 1.795 <laughs> ultras were waiting. <laughs> I mean, I'd just be, I'd just not, I mean, those poor people who uh, would be excited about that. But I know it's just funny how you find yourself using it. You know, I'm just so stupid on it. And, um, you know, I find it hard. Look, I struggle with being a serious person at the best times um so i don't know look there's a part of me that thinks as soon as life is back to normal and mm. pubs are open and everything all the shops everything's open again we can travel freely again, i might get rid of it because um i i really was quite opposed to it when life was normal mm. so listen we'll see but like i'm not putting too much stock into it i know you're a you're a really big foodie what sort of yep. um what have you been cooking up? Have you been experimenting? Um, you've, you're a you're a green egg man, aren't you? Mm -hmm. uh, so so what's been going on there? Is 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 that like most of the people a real focal point of your day? Because I, I can't wait to get to dinner every single day. <laughs> uh, literally the, the the most important day, keeping kids alive and dinner. Yeah. Yeah, and listen, and we're we're pretty similar, and I'm a big dinner person too. You know, I I am not a great breakfast guy. I, I really struggle with breakfast. I don't wake up hungry. I'm not one of those people. 
But in saying that if I'm in a hotel and someone's cooking for me or something, I'm like, I will eat a big breakfast, but I'm at home and you know what it's like, three kids under seven, you're grappling around just trying to keep the train on tracks in the morning and, and keep everyone going. And even without school to get them to, you still, there's a lot going on. And, you know, our youngest uh, is only, you know, uh, 15 months. So it's, it's a mad time, you know. Um, so you're sort of dealing with that. And, but I realized um, I, I'm okay with that. I used, to, I used to annoy me. I used to be like, I wish I wanted a big breakfast. And, you know, I'm someone who, who um, I don't know, like it just feels right to me that I should have a big breakfast, good long, big dinner, whatever. And uh, uh, I once read, uh, saw this interview or read something, Laird Hamilton, do you know Laird Hamilton? Yeah, 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 the big surfer. Uh, big, yeah, big wave yeah. surfer, yeah. yeah. And he was saying this thing about how he never eats breakfast in the morning. He doesn't eat until he's worked up an appetite. And it just really resonated with me, and I've just never thought like that. I've always thought you could sort of force yourself to eat before you do it. So now I'll even have a like, even if I train in the morning, I'll have a, a coffee and a banana or something in my system and train, and then have a proper breakfast at sort of nine thirty or something like that. So I've got into that a bit. Um, lunch is the thing I really struggle with. I really struggle with knowing what to have in my. It, what I want for lunch is a ribeye steak, a load of chips, and three different veg. Like honestly, that's what I, and that's what I could take down. That's so country. It's like dinner in the middle of the afternoon. Is it? Yeah, or well, maybe it is. But like, I'm starving. Then you know, we but we end up. up my parents were, were were both doctors, and we, they didn't have time in the evening to do it. So we used to always have our dinner. And but then when I said that to some of my friends, they were like, "What are you doing? That is such a country bumpkin thing to do." Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then tea is tea time. Yeah. Tea is tea. I mean, we ate, I grew up eating tea late because my dad as a doctor too, and he used to just not get home until about eight. And we used to have dinner at eight. And actually the hungriest I am in the day is about 4.30. I don't care. Even if I have allowed myself a, a ribeye and chips and everything for lunch, I'm starving at 4.30. and stuffing bags of biltong and <laughs> anything I get my hands on into me. Um, and, then, and then eat a massive meal again at eight once the kids are down, you know. Yeah, yeah. But my wife's an amazing cook, like really brilliant. Um, okay. I'm pretty good and I have like a few things that I'm pretty good at. And I sort of looking back now, if we look back at this lockdown period, probably should have pushed myself a bit more in terms of the things that I could cook. But I, I, I'm I, very good at the three or four like favorite things that I'm good Not at. Not over yet, you've got time. That's true. It's true. Um, no, no, no defeatist. Just listen. Get, I know. Yeah. Start this weekend. I've taken on ribs, which I've shared the 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 recipe with you. It was you. an outstanding recipe. Great recipe. That's a great book in general, by the way. That's a great barbecue. I'm also just such a. I'm such a meat. Like I'm just meat. I, I'm 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 so Irish when it comes to food and with just meat and potatoes. Like I mean, I could just live on that. Um, I could probably count on two hands the meals I've had without meat I'm talking breakfast lunch and dinner in my entire life <laughs> like I'm just terrible like I'll have you know there's so many times Millie will be like um so I'm gonna do this quinoa thing with you know asparagus and an egg on top of thing and I'll be like mm-hmm and she goes oh don't worry like I'll put I'll put lardons in there or something and I'm like oh yeah okay yeah sounds great <laughs> she can't even envisage eating it without meat in there <laughs> and do you, do you grow some of your own stuff in, in your garden um, you can't grow meat in the garden, no. <laughs> <laughs> we, um, we, um, <laughs> we, do you have we animals, do... no? Sorry? Do you have any animals? Besides the horse? No, no eating dogs, but do you, do you have a... any cat? No, any, some you bats. Know, some bats. <laughs> bats. bats are good if you can catch them. <laughs> um, we have, um, we've got a horse, we have two goats, we have five chickens, and, uh, on a dog um so it's lively enough um chickens do about 10 eggs a day that's pretty good, good quality yeah really good really good um so we have and then you know we grow chilies and um some stuff like that and um, muck around with potatoes sometimes but you know tried to do potatoes for christmas a couple of years ago i grew them ourselves and i went down to pick them up you know a few days before christmas and they've been in there for a few months and i was like this is gonna be perfect uh, and Elsie Dulcie, our, our eldest, was helping me pick, and she started digging first. She went, 
She was like, Daddy, I've got one. I was like, oh my God, it's actually working. She pulled out potatoes and literally that's <laughs> They were talking like 16 people we were having over from Ireland for, <laughs> it's like, yeah, that's not, that's good. Potato cool. fries for Christmas, yeah. <laughs> um, but I do like, I like to be better, but you know, it's time and kids and it's time to grow your own. And who does that? Is that you that, um, that kind of tends to the garden or? <laughs> you can't even get it out. Um, <laughs> We it's have a rhetorical um, question, but go on. I'll do it anyway. <laughs> and look, we've we've a bit of space here, you know. <laughs> we have a bit of space, so um, no, we have a we have Max, we have our gardener who's here. Um, he's here five days a week. He's here, um, and he's 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 unbelievable. So, uh, we've got to you're a you're a big sports fan. Have you have you struggled not having uh, live sports on like everybody else, or is it something that you watch a lot of, or do you have the time to watch it? Yeah, I tell you, I, I have a bit of a gym set up here, so when I'm training, I'm training at home. When I've got you know, kettlebells and whatever I have, and the running machine, I've got what Peloton, I've got all this stuff down there, which is great. And my one of my favorite things about having it all there is. Um, a TV in there and I just exclusively watch Sky Sports Golf on it and I've been loving watching actually all the Solheim Cup re replay stuff I'm just loving this that seems to be on the most bit of Ryder Cup stuff old opens you know all those chronicles of a champion all that I, you know I can't get enough of all that you know um, and then I find myself um, I sent you those pictures to you a couple of weeks ago or last week watching this uh, Lions t second test, uh, 2009. Um, I find myself doing that because of, yeah, genuinely missing uh, rugby. And, um, it, you know, rugby and golf have been my two sort of main sports. I'm a big football fan, soccer fan. Um, but I find myself, yeah, I've been missing that. But, like, I've, as the years have gone on, I've been less and less into it. Um, it's sort of the thing that with having a family and stuff has subsided a wee bit is, is football. Um, but rugby and golf, um, I feel I need. But it's interesting, mate. Like I was thinking, you know, you take it all away and yes, look, we're all missing it and we all, um, we all love it. And we don't need it. You know, you think you really need it. And um, you look at the, the, you know, let's take golf and these tournaments they have every week, these Rolex events and the money that they're for and all this stuff. And like, it's like, it's it, it sort of when you take a step back from it, all just seems a wee bit too much. Do you, do you reckon? Know what I mean? Do you reckon? Do you not think? I do. I just think the money involved when you think it. Look, look at, look. No one's having it. Uh, apart from whoever set up Netflix, no one's having a great day at the office financially <laughs> in this time. Um, I don't know. There's been a bit of that thing of like how much people are struggling, and then I, I've just been a bit like. Jesus golf tournaments and the money that's played for every week and does there need to be such big events every week and you know with such huge money and you come 50 if you still get you know, 10 grand and I don't know I, it just made me it's just made me look at it a bit differently but but by the way I'll still be gagging for it when it comes back you know what I mean but it, I have just it's made me assess it a little different have you played golf since they um they opened the course courses back up yeah yeah uh, I, a lot I got, I got out this morning um uh actually yeah listen i'm lucky but i, I be, just before christmas i put in a golf simulator in, in into my house and so i played more golf than most people i was actually texting with, i was texting with rory a few weeks ago and um i was like uh have you played any golf he said haven't haven't hit a ball in seven weeks i'm here with like blisters on my hands from playing so much golf in my room um <laughs> So it's been nice because I've taken out the real golf now and I'm playing, I'm playing the best golf of my life, I have to say. Which isn't five? great golf, but I am, I'm, so, I'm hitting so what's, your, what's So what's your go-to course on, um, on, on the simulator? It's funny, the company who make it are an Asian company, so there's a lot of Chinese courses and a lot of Japanese courses I've never heard of. Right. Uh, some South Korean courses. Um, but then it has you know a couple off the the the, the roster for us for the Dunhill. It's got um, Kings Barnes and it's got uh, St Andrews. All three or four courses at St Andrews. Um, so I play the old course St Andrews a lot because you know you're hoping that every October you'll be <laughs> you'll be there for real, getting your Dunhill invitation, and because 
let's be honest, it's quite a scorable course. It's not, you know, if, hit, if you're hitting it quite well, you know, you'll, you'll play well at St Andrews. Um, so for a confidence booster, or if you're thinking about having a simulator is, you tinker so much because you can. So you'll be watching something on Sky Sports and McGinley will say something about the you know, strong left-hand grip or something. You're like, oh, downstairs and try that. And you do it. But you have a telly down there by the simulator. So can you kind of get your tips from, from it and then literally go and hit shots immediately? No, I mean, I'm willing to to to, to, to take the 10-second journey away from that TV to get down there. Green shot. I must, I must, listen, I must see what, they, what he said next. Up the stairs. <laughs> Makes sense, all right. No wonder you've got calves like Phil Mickelson. <laughs> well, he has calves like me. <laughs> um, I have I brought the iPad down there just a couple of times, and, and uh, often I, I like um, which I was able to do before Christmas when there's still golf on, um, and early in the new year, uh, or otherwise my golf on there. But I would bring. If there's live sport on, if there's football or whatever, and I want it, but I want to hit balls, I bring my iPad down there and I'd be able to watch it while hitting balls, which is kind of a dream. It's also, we have, yeah, there's, it's, yeah, it's good. It's good so so where, where do you ordinarily play your golf? Is it locally to where you're living now? Well, or, yeah. I, so I live in Gloucestershire. Um, and uh, yeah, a club called Minchin Hampton. It's got two new courses, 36 holes, new year now. It's got an old course on the common, which is, I took Linksy, um, that is, I played it for the first time, the last nine minute walk from my front door, which is pretty good. So, um, yeah, and the weather's been unbelievable. So I've been, mm. you know, it's been really nice. I'm out this afternoon, actually, I'll give you a laugh. I'm I'm on the bike with the clothes on, <laughs> on the shoulders. I said to my missus there, she goes, what? I haven't done it for 25 years, but I want to have a few drinks in, oh, distancing drinks That's in, good. um, in Connor Ridge, Shane Lowry's um, uh, manager's house uh, after playing golf with him. So yeah, I said, no, I'm gonna get the bike down there, the clubs up and helmet. She's like, I want a picture of that. No, you can't. I'm, 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 I've got my golf shoes on here here now, ready to go, ready to sprint out the door. Nothing else, just that shirt and some golf shoes. <laughs> It looks that way. I got a pair of pink shorts on, and trust me, my, my I do not have dark complexion skin, so it looks as though it could be in the book. Um, but do you, from a rugby point of view, you you played a bit of rugby. To a, good, to a good standard. What is a good standard? I mean, compared to you, probably not a great standard. Um, but I played, um, I played an okay standard. I played in the first at Methody, which is a big rugby school, um, but only in my upper sixth year not in fifth year or lower sixth year in fact there's nowhere near it either of those years back three um, on, on, the, on the wing full, full back um, I was I was I was out half until upper sixth and then I uh, moved on to the wing when they realised I did the 100 sub sub 11 so it was you know I didn't really have a choice um, uh, and also because at 10 I probably ran it too much myself um, and they thought maybe give me a bit more space and David Wells who's our coach who's sort of iconic figure up, up in the north um, decided to move me on the wing um, and then I, I, I thought that you've spun that positively that's so good <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> it's always a promotion from 10 to the wing isn't it <laughs> <laughs> hands, you, you forgot to leave you left out the hands like feet part no <laughs> hold on let, let, let's you know it's funny obviously because of what i'm saying about me being quite a positive person i've, I've only ever seen it that way <laughs> it's just just with, with his pace we just have to make use of him out there <laughs> um anyway school and then to be honest i played my best rugby ever the year after i left school but weirdly i was still at school i repeated sick form after my mom died, and and I I, I stay I stayed in actually year school, and um, obviously I was too old to play for Methody anymore. Um, only I was very young for my original year, so I was only missed out by a month or something, which was annoying. But um, so I couldn't play at school. So I played Belfast Harlequins. I played the Harlequins under twenty three, and yet at the end of that year, which is probably a try to coax out of me because you know it very well. I, got, I had an old stone the twenty one trial. <laughs> uh, you've heard about you've heard about more than once. <laughs> How did it go again? Well, listen, um, I, you know, I'm sat here uh, <laughs> 18 years. Uh, what could have been? 18 years later as, a, as an actor. Um, 
I wasn't good. I just it wasn't good enough. I look, I I think I I could have played a decent like club, you know, All Ireland Division Two probably, and you know, been in the stages and you know, as a real job, you know, getting your hunt. Back then, I remember I played for Harlequins first twice. Then when I was nineteen, and got fifty quid each time to play and I remember thinking this is like yeah. unbelievable that you could get handed money to play rugby um, and then I went off to uni played for a bit um, uh, didn't go to a good rugby uni or whatever but but so went and moved back fly half at uni back to, back, back to 10 um, and then I had a big decision to make about going back to uni and I didn't want to go and I wanted to move, move to London Uni, and I had an England universities trial in the in the August at the end of the August, and I said to be honest, that that's the only reason I'd want to go back to, for the England university trial, which is some nonsense. Um, so he was like, "Well, if that's it, then uh, I'm happy to let you, you know, you know, step out of uni and, and you know follow your gut, which I did." Eventually. And would you keep an eye on um, on on Ulster's progress? Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, you're a bit, you're a big Irish fan. Anytime. You know, you'll would you go to a bit of trouble to go and watch an Ireland game if you're in a in a foreign country? Um, yeah, yeah, I would. Yeah, I would. Particularly if it's a big game, it's an important game. You know, I've had. Um, I mean, Jesus, I think back now. Um, you know, it's. Uh, I, I back. You know, this is going to sound like sort of. You know, when I was at school, when I was growing up. Uh, Every Friday night, would you know, every other Friday night would be at Raven Hill. You know, it's a big thing going to the Ulster matches and those Friday night games. And um, I had some great memories of, of, of going to watch Ulster then, and you know, running on the pitch to try to get Gary Longwell's uh, autograph after. You know, those are the days. Um, and uh, then I sort of I think when I first moved to London, fell out of interest with Ulster a wee bit just because you're away and you're doing different things and it's just you know it wasn't on my radar as much and then more recently I probably got uh, back into to following Ulster closely but with Ireland I've never wavered you know it was just such a big thing for me growing up we had a we had an apartment in Ranala um, when I was a kid almost exclusively for when well, my sister was at uni there and stuff but when we were younger than that it was exclusively for international weekends and going down and staying there and um Actually, the day I proposed to Millie, we were in LA and I was out there doing pilot season or whatever, uh, eight, nine years ago. And um, Ireland were playing um, Wales in the Six Nations and there's this pub out in Santa Monica by the beach. It was the only place, it's a bit better now in LA, it was the only place it showed you, you paid $20 to get in and, it, you know, kicked off at like six in the morning LA time so I had Millie up at five it was way down the beach so it was like 45 minute drive and she was going what and I knew I was going to propose to her that day and she was like I can't I'm honestly you're getting me up to go I was like just you have to come with me. you go yourself I'm like no you have to you have to come with me dragged her the whole way to Santa Monica to watch um, and we got beaten by Wales a terrible match the TV was crap as well they, they kept losing their signal it was dreadful and Millie was just like what am I doing with this guy like what a loser and I was just trying to tell her like your day is going to get better or maybe it's not <laughs> but in my head in my head it's going to get better um so um yeah I I I I, I make an effort to, to watch Ireland definitely yeah. tough crowd you know getting blamed for a bad broadcast <laughs> <laughs> yeah but listen you know I paid 20 quid did you get your breakfast for 20 quid as well yeah, if, tell you if someone cooks it for me, I'll eat it. <laughs> Just before you go, um, what are you watching at the moment? Um, you talked about Netflix. Are you um, are you someone that delves into the deepest, darkest parts of Netflix, or are you do you just skate on the top with, along with everybody else? I.e., have you watched The Last Dance? Yeah, it's funny, isn't it, with Netflix? Uh, I think there's other platforms that it's sort of easier to find good stuff, if I'm honest with you. With Netflix, um, they, they, they kind of, they're, they're sort of quite forceful in what they want you to watch, aren't they? You know, and it's like they have picked their prize asset for the week and they are shoving it down your throat when you mm -hmm. get on there. Um, so it's some stuff you can't avoid. Um, and uh, I'm not saying that's a good or bad thing. It's just sometimes it means you miss out on some other great stuff that's on there that you'd have to hunt about for a wee bit. Mm. Um, 
but yeah, you know, we did. Uh, have you heard of this thing, Normal People? Nobody's talking about it. This tiny show. I've started the book twice and and um, yeah. and not completed it. So my yeah. um, my missus is talking is raving about it. Says it's really good. Act like it's it's brilliant. They are they are brilliant. It's um, very nuanced, beautiful work. You know the, yeah. the two the two leads. Um, so yeah, we took uh, the last dance. Yeah, of course. Um, do you watch it? Do you watch it with Millie? No, I didn't, and, I, and but I, there's a few people that are sort of above the sport and above, mm. you know, like you know they, you know, they are more than just you know, um, a, you know, a player in the game, and, and Jordan's obviously one of them, and so I thought it would be sort of enough to to get Millie involved, um, and she didn't really have any interest. I mean, look, there's a lot of it. She'd say she would have interest in, and then there is some stuff that is just very yeah. much about the season and. Losing to you know Orlando Magic and what that meant, all this stuff. But it's it was it's phenomenal. His name, I mean, what a what an athlete, and you know, um, just the scale, just the scale of his his popularity and his fame and his reach and mm. and just the athleticism of the guy. If it's my, I mean, the whole time like smoking massive cigars in the change room. Going, What's that about? How did you get away with that? I, yeah. I want to understand that. Is is that just a look smoke? Surely is he. Is there a little inhale going on there? What's like? It's a non-stop sort of smoke fest. Yeah, you sort of don't with a cigar, don't you? I mean, I think that's the thing about it. It's not like really going into your lungs. Um, it's not great for the inside of your mouth and all this sort of diseases you can get within the mouth. I think, but um, your lungs are let alone really. I think by by cigars. Um, I'm not a big cigar guy. <laughs> um, I I probably have more cigars in the last twelve months than I have in my life which is about four um, in the last 12 months. But, you know, if you really commit to it, it's like an hour and a half to, like, fully get through one if mm. you want to finish it. Mm. Um, but I'm usually just, like, at a wedding or, you know, you know that's when, when I'll rock one out. And what's I'm your thoughts on... Pre-game. I agree with you on, on Jordan. Do you think, because he's bigger, you know, than other players, do you think... He has the right to perceive himself that way as well, or is do you look for a little bit more humility in in kind of heroes of the game? Well, everyone says you were a bit of a prick in the change room. <laughs> <laughs> Not everyone can be wrong. <laughs> listen, um, no, and listen, you know, there's some people you let away with a bit more, probably, and you're. Let, I, I think what is interesting is that they kind of all said that he got the best out of them and got more out of them than mm. than he would have had he been just Mr. Nice Guy. So there's something in it. And I do think at the heart of it, as much as he had all these like internal battles and like he, he and he needed those to get through the games and perform the way he did. There's also like he wanted he wanted the team to win. Yeah. You know, he, he wanted them to be champions, you know, every year if, if he could. So, you know, I, I there's more alliance for it, you know, um than, than most players because of the quality he had, you know. Mm-hmm. But it, but and but then you hear stories that, you know, where people you just don't have to be like that. Like I'm not, you know, there's lots of brilliant team sportsmen who are not like that and mm-hmm. still got mm-hmm. the best of themselves and and their play, and the players around them every week, you know. Yeah. Um. What what's next? What's next for the next couple of months? Like so so you know I don't know if you're a music goer, but if if there were um, driving music gigs, or you know, now that we're going to be seeing Premiership or football coming back, will you will you watch that? Will you partake, or are you happy with the current existence to go on for another couple of months? No, I'm ready for things to start to normalise now. I, I, I think um, not that I, there hasn't been elements of it that I haven't loved, but um, yeah, no, I think uh, it's actually as a drive through drive-in cinema that's happening near us uh, next week, I think, that we might go to. And there's a couple of things like that. A, a gig in your car? No. I the old, Dan, the old Dan, Danny Zuko. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Can you imagine? There's just no way. That's not, that's not, that's not going to work. Um, yeah. And what about, uh, what about things you like... Know, you know what I'd love? You know what I'd love? I'd love it if there was like like a Glastonbury-esque or something like Glastonbury or something that was, you know, Glastonbury's obviously at the end of June that's already been cancelled. 
was talking about it apparently being cancelled for next year already to don't know how that works um but something uh, if there was something like that was that there was an outdoor like festival outdoor gig because we, we know those days where you're with people you love and all your mates and your your wife or whatever it is and it's in your head it's always sunny and there's just such a big build up and you're drinking during the day and the sun they're brilliant days if there's something like that that was in the middle of september or something something that seemed like plausible um mm. i would love that i would just love to have because imagine the feeling there the euphoria and everyone finally able to you know you know because people you know as, as great as it is that it's easing now and people are going to be able to see each other it's not real yet you know um it'd be great to have something to really look forward to at the end that's still still clinging on the summer you know that's a big outdoor event like that um but i don't know i mean where do you stand on the Ryder cup without fans I, I don't think it works. I don't think it works. That is the Ryder Cup. And if you don't have cheering, if you don't have sledging going on, if you don't have a bit of that, sometimes it's a bit over the top in the States. We're, sorry, we're probably guilty of it as well, but it, it does seem it's more extreme over in the States where there's a lot of bustling mid shots. And, um, but if you don't have that to rile the players up, you know, I don't think you have the same... Um, yeah, it's not the same context of what Ryder Cup has been built on. So yeah, sure. I think you're better off pushing it a year if, if that's the case. And what about the celebrity Ryder Cup? <laughs> Definitely go with that. You've got, you've got to, at all <laughs> at all costs, push that ahead. Irrespective we, of whether there's a, a real Ryder Cup thereafter. <laughs> can we just get it on record here that <laughs> the only people to win their matches when we <laughs> were part of the celebrity Ryder Cup team in... Uh, in Paris, well, you, you, me, and Niall Horan, all the Irish people are the only people that bring home the points. Shocking. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's the plan for the rest of the day? Um, I have, uh, I promised my my kids a bit of uh, proper straight up daddy time because uh, I, I, it's you know it's half term, um, so there's not even we're not even doing homeschooling in the morning, and I stepped out for a bit of golf, so. Um, I've uh, I've got to uh, I've got to put some proper time in now. And it's a glorious day, so happily enough, I'll play and muck around with them for a bit. And then um, I've hired a car for the last couple of weeks because when we moved to New York, we thought we weren't coming back for a long time, and we got rid of our cars. <laughs> so um, uh, I have the old nineteen eighty eight uh, convertible Merc that has two seats in it. That is, we've been kind of <laughs> trying to get by on with the family of five. Family of five. <laughs> absolute nightmare so um i've been having to hire cars here and there but actually i'm sorted out on monday i'm getting getting a car for a short-term uh deal but um so i've got to drop a hire car off oh very exciting and um we might have a crack at making pizza on the green egg tonight which i've never all right done. yeah make your own dough no no yeah those bases are too easy to uh to buy now and um, someone yeah. sent me like a, a yogurt based dough uh, recipe. I was like, thanks a million. Never trying it. Oh, no, um, no so yeah, um, chicken on a pizza. Uh yes, yeah, yes, yeah. I'd be, I'd be up for that. Is that place in in Dublin still open? Miller's. Yeah, it is. I haven't been for years, but you can get everything and anything. Yeah, it's like that. fish and chip pizzas. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And pizzas it works and there, but I don't know whether that's just because they've been doing it for years and they get away with it. Yeah. But like, if you tried one of those at home. You're like, no. what, what am I doing? Because you'd also make a balls of it too. Yeah, I'm not for the first time I try a pizza on the green egg. I'm not doing hot <laughs> haddock and chips on there. <laughs> I've never actually, I haven't done the, um, I haven't done the Kamado Joe uh, pizza yet. So maybe this weekend. Um, yeah, give it a, give it a word. Um, listen, brilliant stuff. Thanks for your time um, this afternoon and enjoy your play date. And I'm going to go off for nine holes and a couple Are you of... you only play nine? Oh, yeah, we're only allowed to play nine at the moment. Ah, oh yeah, because yeah, in yeah. the Republic you've been pretty strict, right? Yeah, I think they have. I think they have. To be honest with you, nine or twelve suits me these days. Yeah, I, like eighteen. I start getting tired at fifteen, and any any half decent score you like is thrown away. So nine, twelve holes, getting no trouble at home, gone for two hours, and you're back. Are Are you telling me the next time we go on a golf tour somewhere, we're gonna have to? Work it around you only been able to play nine to 12 holes a day. Well, well listen, we missed the first three or four holes on that last day anyway. So that's <laughs> only 14 or 15 holes. So that, that was actually my plan to not wake. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> um, brilliant stuff. Listen, thanks for talking to us. And um, right, good luck in the next while. All right, cheers. Cheers, man.